So we are a familial winery on the Montagne de Reims. As you know, we have several terroirs in Champagne and Montagne de Reims is one of the two most prestigious uh, area terroirs in Champagne. We, we've been growing vines in Montagne de Reims since pretty much 2000 years ago. So it's really into our roots. For Gébrement, so familiar winery, 19 hectares, only premier and grand cru. We focus on revealing the purity and the beauty of the terroir, of the nature, through the range of the wine. And our philosophy consists in, if I can do it quick, quicker, the less we do, the best it is. Just because 80% of the quality of the wine, and including also the dosage, we will see it afterward, depends on the quality of the raw material, 80% of the quality. So we focus really on, on the on sustainable uh, winemaking process. As you know, and then as people know, because we all have professional and passionate people here uh, to, for this conversation about Champagne, um, Champagne is a sparkling wine coming from Champagne area, the northeast of France. And basically it's quite simple. You just transform a still wine into a sparkling wine through the second fermentation. We put the wine into the bottle, we add natural yeast and sugar, and we close it. The, the yeast in the contact of the wine are waking up, and in the contact of the sugar, they're eating it, they're consuming the sugar. And this creates the transformation and creates the second fermentation. And then we leave the bottle in our cellar, so remaining three to ten years at Forge Brimont. And after this moment of rest in our cellars, it means something. It means that all the yeast have eaten the sugar. So at this very moment, the, the, the champagne, it's, it's very dry. There is no sugar anymore. It's extremely dry and quite acidic because we are in the northeast of France. It's raining a lot. It's quite fresh. We have long winters, not like in Singapore. So in fact, we have a dry wine and acidic. So throughout the years and um, at the beginning of the 19th century, we realized that adding a bit of sugar could permit to make it smoother, rounder, and a bit more easier to drink. So that's what we call the dosage. The dosage is the fact of adding sugar in the, in the wine at the very last step. The bottle has been spending between three to 10 years in the cellars without any sugar into it. And before commercialization, we take off the yeast and then we add a bit of sugar. It's the dosage. You have two types of uh, sugar. You have the MCR, concentré rectifié, that most house big inter international, uh, not, well, let's say it's more industrial, let's say. It's an industrial sugar. And you have also homemade liquor. At Forge Brimont, we only put homemade liquor. It's a, sugar beets that we uh, that we blend with our own wine. You now in Champagne we have vines and there are also a lot of agriculture fields. On those fields they produce beetroots, so yeah, we have uh, we have cooperatives that are producing uh, beetroot sugar, it's like a powder, and we vinificate it with our wine and this permits to create the sugar. So we disgorge and then we add the sugar and then we, we add the sugar. It permits to bring a bit of smooth roundness uh, and it also permits to reveal some aromas because depending on the legacy of the winery, where is it located in, located in Champagne and also depending on how the winemaker is, uh, is working, the sugar does not have the same effect. Uh, indeed, for some uh, grape variety, for example, you can reveal some aromas with the sugar. So in fact, there is a big tendency at the moment that consists in believing that sugar is it's not good. Uh, it's only when you want to hide the problem uh, on, in the raw material of the mm -hmm. winemakers. Yes and no, because in fact the sugar can also bring some what we call organoleptic uh, flavors. Flavors. Um, in the history, the dosage has not always been the same. Before, uh, in the 19th century, champagne was much more sweetie. Than it, than it is uh, right now. Um, it comes from the fact that people were drinking champagne mostly on, as a dessert, as a dessert wine. And it was also affected by tendency. Uh, for example, in the 19th century, champagne was very sweet because the Russian court of the Tsar was loving uh, champagne very sweet. So it's called the Russian taste. And then by the end of the 19th century, the tendency has changed to go to a drier type of champagne. It's called the British taste. And the English people were the very first, was the very first market to, uh, to appreciate a bit drier 
在个上班的。